Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla. Today I would like to talk a bit about the bears, short sellers, haters of Tesla and their perception of the company. And what is one of the biggest reasons they get Tesla wrong, in my opinion of course. I would like to share a little video clip about Steve Jobs from way back trying to explain why many have wrong perceptions of people and companies that are making big change in their lives or in their businesses. So let's check it out and let's dive right in. Um, you know, I'm sure that a lot of you have had this experience where you're changing, you're growing as a person. And people still, people tend to treat you like you were 18 months ago. And it's really frustrating sometimes when you're growing up and you're becoming more capable and you, you've solved, you know, maybe you had some personality quirks you've kind of gotten over, whatever it may be. And people still treat you like you were a year to 18 months ago. It can be very frustrating. Well, it's the same with a, a company. Uh, it's the same with the press. Uh, the press is going to have a lag time. And the best thing that we can do about the press is, is, is to, to you know, embrace them, do the best we can to educate them about the strategy, but to keep our eye on the prize. And that is turning out some great products, communicating directly with our customers as best we can, getting the community of people that are going to make this stuff successful like yourselves in the loop so you know everything, and just marching forward one foot in front of the other. And the press will take care of it. It's like the stock price. The press and the stock price will take care of themselves. By the end of this year, it's going to look quite different. And I, I you know, when you, when you do, I mean, I'm like an old man now in this industry, and I've seen the ups and downs, and when you see enough of them, you know that's going to happen. So when you get up in the morning and the press is selling Apple short, go out and buy some shares. You know? That's what I would do. That's what I have done. So I think we can probably all relate to what Steve Jobs here is talking about. We have probably had some family members that still look at you like they did when you were many, many years younger, maybe decades younger, or maybe even look at you as they did when you were a child. Your grandfather still thinks you as a grown up man still like the same cake as you did when you were a small child, or maybe your sister or parents still look at you like you were a teenager, thinking that you like the same things today that you still suck at the things you sucked at decades ago. They see you as pretty much the same exact person, not seeing the changes you have gone through over the last one, two, or three decades. You can be a completely different person today than what you were back then, depending on how many changes you have been going through, things you have been learning and so on. And the same thing is true about companies. And this is one of the biggest reasons I think many people are getting Tesla wrong. Like when people talk about the build quality, they are still thinking about how how badly built Tesla were maybe five years ago and therefore still think Tesla are just as badly built today as they were back then. I've even had comments about Tesla's build quality where the guy was talking about the Tesla Model S he had from 2014 and what, <laughs> hold on here, 2014, that's six years ago, that's pretty much nothing to do with the Tesla we see today. Here you're talking about Tesla when they were a little teenager with dimples everywhere and comparing them to Tesla, the grown up man. Not the same thing here. Tesla has evolved immensely in the last six year. Hell, Tesla has evolved immensely in the last year. Like Sandy Monroe talked about, Tesla making 16 changing to the Octovalve in just four months. Like he said, no one is moving this fast in the industry. And therefore, people tend to get Tesla even more wrong because they are changing even faster than people realize. So even thinking that the Tesla Model 3 that is coming out today is the same Model 3 that was coming out just six months ago, would be very wrong. So to talk about a car back in 2014, where Tesla sold as little as 31,000 cars, not a month, not a quarter, a year. Yes, the entire year, 31,000. 
10,000 cars in all of 2014 and use this as an argument about Tesla and how they are today when we are talking about 500,000 cars per year, six times larger company is just insane. It's not the same as looking at, for example, Ford that has been a grown up man for many, many years. You can look at their revenue back from 2015 and compare that to 2020 and it will pretty much be the same thing. You can look at the Ford F-150 from 2015 and compare it to 2020 model and they will also pretty much look the same, be built the same way and so on. So not much change is happening in Ford and therefore it's much easier to look at Ford like they were five years ago and think this is pretty much the way they are today when it comes to their business and their ice cars. But this does not apply to Tesla. They are just becoming grown-ups and not even a real man yet. They are still just a big boy in their 20s trying to find their way and changing from month to month. So if we look at the Model Y that is coming out of the factories today with single casting pieces in the underbody, you can't compare that to the Model S that was built five years ago. Or you can hardly compare that to the Model S that are built today because Tesla is in big change all the time. But there is of course a limit to the time and resources Tesla has. So the Model S and even the Model 3 are still being built the old fashioned way, if you can say that, where the Model Y is built in a totally new way with much less pieces and therefore much less things can go wrong and eventually all Tesla cars are going to be built this way because it's much cheaper, faster and much better build quality. But just in this year alone we will have two brand new factories up and running that is built in a different way than the last factory and going to be much more efficient and build the cars in a whole new way with three underbody pieces, battery cell to structure with a new 4680 cell brand new paint shop and so on. The cars coming out of Berlin and Austin are going to be even better than the ones coming out of Shanghai. So just in about six months, we can't even talk about the Model Y that is coming out of Shanghai and Fremont and compare them to the ones that are coming out of Berlin. It will be a whole new kind of beast, better in every way. So no, Tesla's cars are not perfect at all. But what I'm trying to say here is that they are improving the cars at a rate that has never been seen before and are even making whole new ways to make the car with giga casting machines that no one else has and therefore Tesla's underbody will be made of much fewer parts than any other automaker are doing so there are less chances of something going wrong and not fitting with the new Teslas in the near future than even the old automakers because they are not perfect either. I think in five years time we will see Tesla not just the golden standard every EV is measured against when it comes to specs and range, but it will be a whole new golden standard in how cars are made and Tesla will have one of the best built quality in the world. They don't have that now, nope, but they will. And we have just seen how impressed Sandy Monroe is with the new Model 3 compared to the old Model 3 that he simply hated. When I saw this car, the Model 3, a couple, three years ago in 2018, I, um, I about puked. I couldn't believe how bad it was. I mean, these are, these are flaws that we would see on a Kia in the 90s or something. This is very, very unusual for a car that you know is used to pairing, uh, you know, producing luxury vehicles. I can't imagine. I can't imagine how they uh, how they released this. And it's kind of the same thing with full self driving. People have tried autopilot in the Tesla and have experienced phantom braking, which is a real thing where the car is braking for no apparent reason, and therefore they think Tesla is behind all the other guys when it comes to full self driving because their cruise control or autopilot system do not have phantom braking and are therefore better than Tesla's is. But what people are forgetting is that Tesla is working on something much, much bigger than just being a good driver assistant. That Tesla has just shown us with the full self-driving beta that can actually drive you from your driveway to your destination with only a few 
if any, interventions. Now that is something no one else can do right now. And the rate of improvement is going up like nothing else. They have just hit the bottom of the S curve. I know Elon has said before that in 2017, they will make a coast to coast drive with full self driving, but they didn't make that. So because of that mistake, where Elon tried to predict the future of something that no one else in the world can do, people don't believe Elon anymore when he says at the end of this year, they will have full self driving. Driving. Because he has been wrong before, so now he's wrong again. Just like we hear, well, is that Elon time? Well, for the last two years, Tesla has been sandbagging their numbers and prediction and actually delivering on their promises. The Giga Shanghai was built in a year, as Elon said, even though nobody believed him. The Model Y started production in March 2020 instead of the end of 2020. So that car came out a half a year earlier than the guidance and the new Plaid Model S that he told us a battery day would come out at the end of 2021 is out now. So they have learned to sandbag and give us some great surprises. And can't wait to see some reviews about the build quality of this new Model S, because that is where Tesla is today, not the Model S from 2014. But again, Tesla is a company in very big growth mode, and therefore it is hard to predict what is going to happen. A lot of things can go wrong, unforeseen things can happen like a pandemic, so they will not get it all right. No one does, but they are getting much, much better at it and sandbagging their numbers. But still people are talking about Elon time and not giving Tesla the credit they deserve for getting better at this as well. People still look at Tesla and Elon as they were five years ago. And that's a mistake. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons why bulls and bears are so far from each other, because the bears are looking back and tend to see Tesla as they were five years ago. And of course, it's only looking at them as a car company, because that is what they were five years ago. Where the bulls are looking to the future and the potential of Tesla, where Tesla will be much, much more than just a car company. And the bulls believe in the growth that we will also see continue because so far Tesla has shown no tendency to slow down, quite the opposite. In 2019, Tesla only had one factory making cars. In 2020, they got one more online. And this year, they will have two more factories coming online, both bigger than the ones before. So this is not growing in a linear curve. This is disruption. They are about to hit the bottom of the S curve. And Tesla has in the past done all this while fighting uphill battle, while they had big problem making money. But this is no longer the case. They have $20 billion in the bank and they have been profitable for the last six quarter, had profits throughout the whole year of 2020. So Tesla has the ability to turn up the speed if they want to and can see some gains from that. They are no longer held back financially. They are more going to be held back on how many materials they can get for batteries, how many batteries they can get their hands on, and how many people they can get to come work for them. So all this in my opinion, but I am of course also a very optimistic bull. So I do believe in the future and the growth of the company, but I believe all this should give Tesla the benefit of the doubt. People should start believing in Tesla because they have overcome so much and destroyed all expectation and delivered on almost everything they have said they would, maybe not on time, but they deliver. So in the eyes of this Tesla bull, people that are still bearish on Tesla is because they're looking at Tesla as they were five years ago and don't see the growth that Tesla has done and are going to do. But as I said before, when 2021 is over, I think it would be so obvious that many would look at Tesla with new eyes. As Steve Jobs said, there will always be a lag time, but the press and the stock price will take care of itself. You just march on. And at the end of the year, it will look very different. So true. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>